I'm doing a demonstration of a um, primary survey, also known as a trauma slick, um, for a casualty care and tactical situation. Um, a slick is a casualty with no injuries, and the, the purpose is just to demonstrate the methods you can use to go ahead and assess your casualty in a tactically safe, efficient manner. Coming up on the scene, you want to have a wide angle. Um, you want to try to determine the circumstances which injured the individual and determine your scene safety and security that's out. Um, obviously, if there's still a gunfight going on, you're going to continue to engage the enemy. Um, if the patient is or the casualty is conscious, you're going to go ahead and encourage them to either engage the enemy or treat themselves um, and move back to your position. If they're unable to do either of those things, obviously you secure the situation first. You don't want to become an additional casualty. Uh, but at the time that security element has moved beyond the patient or you feel that you can get to them in a reasonable fashion without putting yourself at risk, you're going to go ahead and then narrow your view uh, to the casualty themselves. Following the march format, uh, you want to consider major hemorrhage first. So you're looking for any large pools of blood that have, may have started forming around the patient, uh, any obvious signs of uh, uh, active and gross bleeding coming from the patient themselves. None of those things exist. You're going to focus again now on the uh, alertness of the patient. So um, you're going to assess responsiveness. Uh, I like to go ahead and verbally, buddy, buddy, are you okay? And I give them a tap on the shoulder. If uh, um, they've had their bell rung, their TMs are blown or something like that, um, it's kind of rude to go verbally ask them something, not get a response, and then go straight to noxious stimuli. Um, so I give them the tap on the shoulder. If they look at me, I feel a little bit better about it. Uh, now, if they don't respond at all, I'm going to go ahead and find an available piece of skin either coming up behind the jaw and maybe give them a little push, getting down in the web space of the hand and push down to give a little bit of uh, pain. Uh, see if you get a response. You can also grab the nail bed, but that's a little harder to do. If you don't get any response out of them or a minimal response where you don't feel like they're aware of the situation, at this point you're going to go ahead and remove their weapons for your safety and their safety. And you're going to take the weapon, you're going to drop the mag out, and you're going to clear it, set it aside, check for a sidearm. The reason why you want to do this is the patient just uh, was in a gunfight, and the last thing he remembered is badness was happening. Um, he wakes up and he's got someone groping around on him. He doesn't know what's going on. He can cap off a couple of rounds and people have been injured in the past with this going on. Um, once the weapon's clear, uh, you can go ahead and come down. Um, you're going to look in the airway, teeth and tongue intact, no blood, no mucus. You're going to look, uh, listen and feel, feel for respirations against your cheek, look for bilateral rise and fall of the chest. Um, sometimes you may have to remove the equipment to be able to see this, but it's all um, tactically dependent. If you don't feel like you can go ahead and fully assess this patient in the current circumstance, then you won't clamshell them. Now at this point I like to go ahead and break. If I got respirations against my cheek and I don't have any obvious major hemorrhage and I have multiple casualties around, I'll go ahead and take this opportunity to go around and, re uh, go around and assess all the casualties that are in the environment to determine that they're all at the same level. If that's the case, I go through, I complete, I come back and I'll um, come back to the patient and reassess starting at that same level, but I'll move through the rest of my primary survey. Um, also, if I get to this point and I don't like the tactical situation or I feel that it would be more appropriate to move them to a more secure location, after I check for major hemorrhage um, and I assess the airway, I'll drag them out um, to complete the rest of my exam. So I'm going to just assume that I've come back around to my patient, he's here, or I've moved him to another location. I'm going to do the same thing, little tap, nothing, look, listen, and feel, respirations against my cheek. I'm going to go ahead and clamshell his equipment. Now, it is important to be familiar with the different equipment types that exist in your unit. Um, some of them are fast text, some of them are Velcro. Uh, as you can see in this instance, it was Velcro. Grab the plate, pull it up, and then over the head. Uh, it'll be nearly impossible to do with the helmet still on, so you gotta make uh, allowances for that. Uh, I got that clear, I've already assessed the airway. No obvious trauma on the chest. I'm gonna go ahead and come down and do a blood sweep. Basically, I take my fingers and I roll it, rake it down through the hair until I get to the base of the neck. The base of the neck I'll pull out, I'll look for blood on my hands. Um, you want to do this for every successive sweep. Keep your sweeps short. I'm going to come up under them. Don't help, just lay there. Until my fingers touch. 
touching under. I'm going to rake out and look at my hands. I'm going to go ahead and go up high into the axe pockets because that's where the plates don't protect. I'm going to get up high. I'm going to come down on my hips. I'm going to look at my hands again. Each time I'm touching underneath them, I'm looking at my hands. Come up high in the groin. Slide down to the knee. I'm going to look at my hand again. At the knee. Come down to the foot. Look at my hands again. Hit the bottom of the boot and look for blood coming out. I have to maneuver around the patient. High up in the groin. Slide down to the knee. Look at my hands. Looking at my hands each time. Then I'm going to come up to the uh, upper extremities. So I like to put my hand up on the trapezius, grab the clavicle. If they're smaller, it's easier to do. Otherwise, you can bring your other hand and around because the plate usually stops right about here. And so this is another area of common injury. Come down to the elbow, look at my hand. Look at my hand. Squeeze. Good capillary refill. Same thing here. My hands. My hands. Good cap refill. And at this point, I want to go ahead and roll the patient. I'll take the arm up just to make it a little easier. I'm going to just go ahead and grab them, roll them up towards me. Look at the back for any obvious signs of trauma, feeling down. Nothing. I'll go ahead and roll them back. And at this point, I need to reassess my airway to make sure nothing's changed. Look, listen, feel, bilateral rise and fall, chest respirations against my chest. All right.